when someone is sharing how they feel as a result of something that you did or you said. Now this is hardcore because it's not just someone making a comment to you in passing where you're being misunderstood, right? It's when someone is actually coming to the table and addressing how what you did made them feel. So they're already in a vulnerable state and you have the opportunity to also head into that vulnerable state with them and not immediately defend yourself. And I will tell you that everything we're about to cover in this part is very hard to do and takes a lot of work and practice. I have for sure not mastered it, but I have gotten degrees better over time. And so let's go through these steps. So in this scenario where someone is sharing how what you did or said made them feel, we've already talked about techniques and tools as to how to calm your body down. But the next action you need to take for this specific scenario is trade your posture of defense with curiosity. And this is a hard one for me, for sure. Because instead of thinking and having negative curiosity in the sense of why would they ever think, why would, I would never, uh, as my brain's thinking of all these reasons to prepare my speech for why I didn't do that or how could you think that I would do that, I have to be curious to what caused them to come to that conclusion. And my therapist has used this really funny analogy with me called the purple elephant analogy, where how it works is someone is basically saying, there's a purple elephant in the room. No, not actually, right? But this is the example. They're like, there's a purple elephant. What you did it caused me to feel purple elephant. And your immediate reaction is, are you insane? Like there's clearly not a purple elephant in this room. That response from me, wrong, so wrong, so bad, never going to improve the situation. What I actually need to do instead is take that posture of curiosity and say, tell me more about this. Tell me what you're seeing, what you're feeling about this purple elephant being in the room right now. And if someone doesn't share kind of outright about how they're feeling, but you can tell, whether it's their tone or their body language, you can tell something is just off and that you might've had something to do with it. You can ask a tee up question like this. Hey, I'm noticing that something changed. Now, this is where something changed should be an actual label. Hey, I'm noticing that your tone kind of got a little sharp. Um, what caused this? Or did I do something that, that caused this? How did it make you feel? You can ask a myriad of questions that are genuinely about curiosity instead of trying to defend yourself and the tone matters more than anything else. Let me, let me share why. Did I do something to hurt you? No one's gonna respond well to that because now I'm like, holy cow, why are we fighting? Hey, I'm noticing this. Insert, label whatever emotion you, you're thinking you're receiving from them. Did I, did I do something to hurt you? Something like that. So much better, right? So much calmer. You're both entering into a more peaceful, centered conversation as a result of that. And here's an important piece is asking what and how questions. So start the question with what or how instead of starting with why. Because why comes across as accusatory. And we spoke about this in the um, questions episode, but it's important to definitely bring back for this because this is where it really matters. And let me tell you how powerful this has been because I used to make a habit of asking why questions. Why do you think I did that? Or why would you say that? Why would you think I did that? You know, things where that's not good. I would change it to how, how did you hear what I said? Or how did that come across? How did you feel when I said that? What did you, what was my tone like when I said that? Questions like that. 
opens the dialogue and everyone feels safe. Nobody needs to defend, nobody's accusing. You're just in a safe environment for conversation. And it's also really important when someone is discussing this and starts opening up and you're asking curious questions that you let them speak fully. Now, when you're in a defensive state, the default setting is going to be to cut them off and prove why you did not do what they're saying you did or the actions you didn't mean anything. Active listening involves immediately not cutting somebody off, but letting them speak fully, even if they're pausing along the way to make sure that their thoughts are clear for you to receive it the best way. And you can look up a technique called the speaker listener technique. I found that really helpful. Um, we discussed open-ended questions, power in the pause, and more like that. Everything is involved in this curiosity piece. So after you've been curious, which is part one. Part two is using a mirror technique. So let's say that you just asked them, hey, um, blah, 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 you know, like, how did that make you feel? Or you're asking questions that are making them give you a response and share their feelings openly. The mirror technique is when you simply repeat back to them what you just heard them say. So. Here's a mirroring example. Okay, so it sounds like, and what I'm hearing you say is that you're frustrated with me because I left my shoes in the hallway and you almost tripped on them and almost got hurt. And they're like, yes, yeah, that's exactly right. Now that's good, that's really good if, if you're on the same page there because once you get to that mirroring technique, you then can move to step three, which is validating, but validating is probably the hardest part of all because how to validate is someone is by saying something like, yeah, I can see why that would frustrate you. Now, it comes across as if you are owning up to what you did was being wrong. Your pride has to drop, but you're not saying that. You're actually just acknowledging, yeah, I can, I can, your feelings are valid. I can see why that would frustrate you. It's huge. I, I mean, if you're able to validate someone else's feelings, even if yours aren't validated, that can calm most arguments. I am absolutely convinced of it because it has happened and worked for me. But the hardest point or the hardest part is of course, getting to that point. And so after you validate, you could say, wow, yeah, that is, I, I totally understand why you'd be frustrated by that. And, and that definitely was not my intention. So I'm sorry. And sometimes you don't even need to say sorry if you weren't necessarily in the wrong. Someone is just kind of sharing that they're frustrated or they are insert emotion as a result of what you did. Be honest. Hey, I can see why. And that wasn't my intention. You have to be so cautious and aware of your body language and your tone when you're sharing this because it's not going to work if you don't actually see why they feel that way. And to be honest, that has happened to me multiple times where someone is explaining something to me and I literally can't see it. I can't see it at all. Which me, if I can't see and can't empathize with how they're feeling, that means I'm not being curious enough and I need to ask some more questions so that I can fully see that quote purp ele purple elephant that they're trying to describe to me. Um, and so along with that, a major thing I've been learning is the power of taking accountability. So I would say that that is step four here. And that can look like something such as, you just snapped at somebody and you're like, Hey, that really came across as uh, sharp. Was that your intention? No. Oh man. Yeah, actually I can see why you would feel that way. And my tone did come across as sharp. I'm, I'm sorry. I, that was not my intention. I, I did not mean for that to come across. I'm, I'm frustrated, but I should not have taken it out on you. So to recap, when someone's approaching you trying to state how, what you did or said made them feel, 
and your body is flashing the red light to go in fight response and defend yourself. Step one, be curious. Step two, mirror. Step three, validate. Step four, accountability when applicable. And step five, getting to resolution. Here's some just quick things I want to say about that. A great analogy that I have learned to reach resolution is to actually ask this question. How can I take the pain off the wall? Now, there needs to be more context before you ask this question, but the example is, let's say that you just went into someone's room and threw hot pink paint all over the wall. Saying sorry doesn't get the pain off the wall. The pain is literally still in the room. So you might be sorry, they might forgive you, but you still need to figure out how you can take the paint off the wall. And that's how you move towards resolution and reconciliation. And sometimes they might say, I don't know, but you can still hold the space for that to ask, well, I do want to know because I don't want this to be eating you up and you thinking that, you know, I, I did this on purpose or meant to do it. I really feel a lot of remorse and I, I want to know what I can do. Um, and then other times someone knows immediately what you can do. And it's a sorry plus something else. Taking an action. Maybe it's, maybe you let slip out a name that you called someone just out of your anger. And someone's how can you take the pain off their wall is I need to know that you don't really think that about me and that that was just something in the heat of the moment. And then you have the opportunity to say, absolutely, I did not mean to say that. I let frustration get the best of me and I chose to use those words and I'm sorry. And just a great question to keep in mind when we go through these types of conversations that are no doubt difficult. The question is, do you want to be right or do you want to be reconciled? Because if you want to defend yourself, if I want to defend myself, then I'm saying through my behavior, I'd rather be right than be reconciled. And I know that all of us watching this video would rather be reconciled than be right, ultimately, because we all want to learn and grow in this area and become less defensive together.